Jeshua was not poor. Hey guys, it's John here. Um, I wanted to hop on and talk about this topic today because I think it's an important topic. It seems to me that a lot of people in the spiritual slash religious world have a very weird relationship with, with money and income. Um, when you when you think of Jeshua, many people think of him as this poor, wandering prophet, right? And Jeshua was not poor in any way, shape, or form. The reason you think of him as, as this wandering prophet is because they didn't have cars. That's how they traveled. They walked. They, they rode a donkey, you know. That, that's the way of, of the world back then. It wasn't that he was doing that out of not having a Cadillac, right? It was out of, out of that's the way you did things. You traveled that way. But let's talk about Jeshua himself, the man. Was he poor? Not at all. And he was not poor for, for several reasons. Now, we know a couple of things. Lazarus was a wealthy man. Why do we know that? Because... He, Joshua says he can't, he can't follow him because he's, because he's wealthy. That's what he, that's literally what he says, because he's too invested in his businesses, right? He said that, um, uh, well, he, he got crucified, right? And what happened? He was bought off of the cross by Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy landowner. Joseph of Arimathea lay at him in his wealthy tomb. A wealthy landowner, right? I have very distinct memories of going into towns ahead of Jeshua and and finding lodging and benefactors and um, you know donations and people would donate food and clothing and shelter and and Jeshua wanted for nothing. He he had everything always, and it was because people were. Donating, people were, were sharing, people were housing and clothing. You look at this painting behind me, that's a that's a almost burgundy looking uh blanket over his shoulder. And I say blanket because that's what it was. It was a blanket you wore over your shoulder, you wrapped it at the waist, and then when you needed it at night, you pulled it off and you covered yourself over. Right? But it was not a cloak, it was not it was this but that burgundy color back then was a very wealthy, wealthy man's color. He must have gotten that from a wealthy man or a wealthy person who said, you should have this. So he was getting and, and, and having things donated and, and he was being fed and clothed and, and everything. And in fact, he talks about Lazarus himself. He comes back and stays with Lazarus often. You know, Martha and Mary knew him as, as, as someone that they, that they interacted with. It's in the Bible that way. So he was, he stayed with Lazarus more than once, right? He was not living a life of a poor man. He was living a life of a man who did not worry about wealth or prosperity. When he spoke about wealth, he didn't speak about wealth in terms of wealth being bad. He spoke about terms of wealth being the thing that you're over consumed by. He talked about the love of money being the root of many evils. The people who are so invested, even in the Gnostic text, he sends his servant out to collect people for dinner. And all the different businessmen said, I can't because of this, and I can't because of that, and I can't because of this. And, he, and the servant comes back and says, nobody can come because they're all doing these things. And he says, you won't find people to come to our dinner who are, who are too busy with their businesses and too busy with this to, to find their own salvation within. Go out and ask anybody to come. Don't focus on just the wealthy. Focus on, on everybody. Because the reality of it, of it is, the people who are so invested in business that they're excluding their love of the fellow man, or their love of themselves, their love in general, they're, they're, not, they're not coming. Because they're, they're too busy with their business, with their stuff. They're not living the life that Jeshua talked about. And was Jeshua poor? No. Did Jeshua shun those people because they had business? No. Those, many of those people, Lazarus included, kept inviting them back to their house to come back in and talk to them and, and be there. And, and Jeshua was very plain with them. You, know, you can't come because you're doing this. He, he understood that you know, it is their choice to do what they wish to do, but realizing 
that the people who owned a lot of land and property, they're the ones who are not doing it. Now let's let's get away from Jeshua for, for a second. One of Paul's, now I'm not a big fan of Paul, but one of his letters uh, to the Romans was asking them for benefactors, was asking them for money to get to travel to Rome. He was literally in in uh, looking for money to to go there and do those things. Right? He was looking for benefactors, people who would who would treat him as Jeshua was treated when Jeshua traveled. He was looking for uh, finances through preaching, through his his work. Right? And so that's what. And and I, I, do I think it's wrong? No, I don't. As long as the as long as the teaching was the important thing, which I'm not always sure it was the most important thing with Paul. But if you're if you're trying to do something, or you or you you have a desire to share your message somewhere, I don't think it's wrong in any way, shape, or form to accept donations, accept all those things, which I I obviously do, right? But Jeshua said it was the same way. He he got donations. He got clothes to put over, blankets to put over his shoulder to keep warm at night. You know, and he said, well, and what else did he say? He says, you find someone who's worse off than you, give him, give him your, your cloak. Give him the things that you can give because that's just the loving thing to do. Another one's going to come because he understood the abundance of the world came to him. And what is, what is true success? What is true financial success? Some people will, will put a monetary number on that. I put freedom on that. I just say, use the word freedom to be able to go and do the things that, that inspire me, go and do the things that, that excite me, to go and experience the things that I, that I think would be wonderful to experience. I mean, and the freedom to be able to do that whenever. I mean, that's, that's the life that Joshua lived. His world was built upon his choices and where he walked and where he went. Where are we going next? Uh, I don't know. Let's go that way. Right? <laughs> right? That was his his being, but he was he was very successful, and money was always there for him, and beautiful clothing was always there for him. It was always there for him. He didn't live in a lack mentality or a poverty mentality. He lived in a joyful, loving mentality, and when you do what you love, the money always comes anyway. So no, Jeshua was not poor. Jesh- Jeshua was abundantly wealthy. And that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. The John of the New Channel is solely funded by your generous donations and purchases of private readings and merchandise. To help out, go to johnofnew.com or use the donation link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.